So thank you very much, uh, Stefan and Karsten. Um, I think it's a very interesting presentation because it shows uh, quite a bit of integration between different systems and also more generic uh, aspects of the possible solutions and the also the evolution of uh, all the different layers. So now the floor is open to questions. So what I will do is that I will show you the I will share my screen again because I will show you the agenda so you have in mind the presenters. Um, and then you can ask questions. Let me share the agenda. Okay, so you should see the agenda. So we have the four presentations. So um, uh, feel free to uh, ask questions. Okay. I'm sure there are. <laughs> Sylvie, I, I, I can start. Uh, we may have solutions that depend of the type of need. I mean, we do not, I mean, there are different levels of need. So I guess it's, it's important to emphasize those different levels. Uh, Guillaume mentioned that there are some uh, uh, services that are more for Copernicus, some, uh, so that means more downstream users. Uh, but we also need to have services for, for the climate modeling uh, community itself to, to help the analysis. So I guess it is important to, to make a clear, um, it's probably not one tool fit all. So we probably need to clarify this. And second, I had a question to Alessandro uh, uh, Elia. Uh, is the, um, the, the Ophidia system already... Uh, used in production at CMCC or um, for a wide range of climate modelers or how is it? Uh, well, we're using uh, Opidia on uh, very different uh, cases. Uh, some of them are, uh, for example, used uh, uh, directly on, the, for example, the output of uh, like uh, uh, um, like also ocean ocean modeling data, but also using this, for example, on uh, the multimodal scenario, we've used this with uh, uh, did some tests uh, up to uh, seventeen models from uh, from uh, SMIP five data, and we're also planning to use this uh, for uh, SMIP six data, and uh, uh, but but also but, uh, we're also um, building other other types of uh, analysis as uh, as uh, um, as we get the user requests from our uh, internal, but, but also uh, uh, external users to the uh, uh, to to CMCC. Thank you. And uh, I don't know if there are comments on my comment <laughs> that we may have a need for different levels, different tools according to the type of users. Sandro speaking. I, I think you're totally right, Sylvie. And, and I think there is also an opportunity behind this comment uh, for our community to be, um, to play a role and to be um, really uh, in the game. Uh, for instance, in Copernicus, uh, like projects or scenarios and uh, also in uh, the European Open Science Cloud. So that's a way also for our community to be in um, to be not isolated, to be really in the whole game and provide different solutions depending on use cases, the users, or as you said, the different scenarios. So there are cases where we are clo very close to the modeling groups and so we need to uh, prepare something that is really ready to use for them. And there are other cases where we need a uh, data analysis support for like downstream services. And uh, in that respect, there are different uh, requirements and there could be also different solutions. So I totally agree on the fact that there is no one fits all solution in, uh, in, in this respect. Is Christian uh, speaking? So I think uh, I agree also about this point that we probably we cannot have uh, one solution for all types of users, but at the same time we need to uh, not to, uh, to to 
to work on too many parallel solutions, like uh, I mentioned. I like very much also uh, Alex's presentation because uh, those are questions I ask myself all the time. <laughs> so, uh, and we need to to provide solutions for different types of user, but at the same time, we must not develop too many parallel solutions for for things that are very similar. So, so this is the what we need to uh, think about and also uh, uh, consider while we design our system. Yeah, there should be some interoperability guidelines we should um, we should take into account. So today we, from the different presentation, we heard about, for instance, in most of the cases, and the WPS um, interface for um, processing service, or um, there was also the very interesting presentation from the KRZ on the security aspects, which I think could be like a, um, an, a sort of agreement point for the community on the standards and the solution that we could actually um, we could actually use. And I think there is also another point that is really in common, uh, which is about like developing uh, applications like in a Python ecosystem. So taking advantage of all the um, data science libraries and the environment that is already um, available. And so this brings also the Jupyter, uh, for instance, the interface for interactive data analysis. So I see there are some points that are already shared by the different solutions, but still when we dig into a specific use case, there could be like specific needs that could make, uh, that could bring to some uh, differences or some aspects that should be more emphasized in one case or less relevant in others. So, uh, so uh, that one to, uh, to apply on those uh, issues and questions. If no one else has a question, yes, um, I I can definitely comment on. I Ag brought up the idea of the registry for characterization for data, and just wondering. You know, this seems to push back more into the you know, data management concerns because such categorization that's sort of a new form of metadata, and if it's very useful, it might be best back in the index. So if you're searching for data, you can see the characterization or particular characterizations would be a searchable uh, term like other search facets, but just a, a thought there. Um, Sasha, I think I think that's really yeah. useful. I, I, I think the the vision for this, if we could create some kind of, of register would be that it could potentially be a community resource. Um, I don't. I don't yet really have an I idea of how how it would look. But you know, if there was some kind of web service that you could query, um, yeah, I, I think it's potentially a useful yeah. addition. I, mean, I, I think yeah. I don't want to get too into details, but yeah, if the, if it's at the level that the you know these characters these issues maybe they don't. It's not an immediate thing. It gets a would update an index, but it it could, hey, we you know, we found this agree on this characterization and now it's part of the index. But leave it at yeah, so we can play yeah, play on that more in the maybe search organization future discussions. If anyone has any suggestions or or prior work that they think we should look at in terms of that, then please contact me. I'm really pleased to hear your input. We have time for one or two more. Uh, 
Abadeus who wants to um, uh, add more uh, comments, uh, I would say that the um, uh, what I see also as very uh, uh, quite a bit of an issue is the um, what has been presented also by uh, uh, Stefan at the end is that uh, there's also uh, a need to support uh, less standardized uh, uh, data sets like uh, not entirely CMIP compliant. Uh, I think this will be th this is a real need for especially uh, really uh, end users and so I think we need also to consider that. And the other point I want to raise, maybe there will be some uh, comments about it, is that, um, and I will talk a little bit about it in my presentation, is that um, sometimes we, uh, some users do have some computing resources somewhere in the cloud or on other infrastructure. So if it's uh, a possibility for them to deploy standardized uh, tools that we have available, for example, in Docker's or things like that, and that can be where the that can be deployed easily on a different kind of heterogeneous architecture. It, could, it can be interesting also not to put all the uh, computational uh, computational resources efforts on uh, our infrastructure. Of the, I don't know if there are any comments on that. Um, so it's Tom. Uh, I do agree with you that. Um, it's a, it's a paradigm that is uh, that we see the move the application to the data uh, paradigm. So I think we should get ready to that, and also thinking about um, the the way to um, to quote or build user, but not necessarily that. Just to know that um, there is a shift to for some users to actually rent the data and computing resources instead of buying it. This is a bit more applicable to Earth observation data, but but I think there is a, a shift that we should observe also in climate. So I think we have to move on. There will be more time for discussions as well at the end of the workshop.